Hey y'all, what's going on? So I've noticed that some of the students that I've got are having issues with these transverse and azimuth angles. So I thought we would do an example over that today to give you all another uh, example on how to do that. So what we're going to do in this problem is we're going to find the magnitude and the coordinate direction angles of our resultant force. Okay, so if you look, we've got two forces. All right, I got this 55 pounds, and then I've got 75 pounds. Now the 75 pounds, I have the little right triangle to use to get my angular data. Here, I've got the transverse azimuth angles. All right, so we get two different ways to do it. Now, if I'm wanting to find the magnitude of the resultant force, remember what the resultant force is, right? So the resultant is the sum of all the force vectors. So in order to get the resultant, I need to sum up the force vectors. Okay, and then once I get all of that, then I can worry about these coordinate direction angles. All right, so first thing we're going to do is get our forces. So let's go ahead and start with this 75 pounds. All right, I'm going to call this F1 just to give it a, a subscript. All right, so what we're going to do is we need to have the magnitude of the force times our unit vector. Right? Well, what's our magnitude of the force? Well, that's 75, right? That's given right there. So 75 pounds is the magnitude. And then the unit vector, well, that tells me the direction my force is pointing in, right? So I'm going to use these values on this triangle to find that. Okay? So first of all, let's do the y component. All right, we're going we're gonna to skip x because this lies in the yz plane and we know that because it looks like it has this rectangle right that's in that yz plane so we don't have to worry about x here so let's look at this we need our y component now is y going to be positive or negative it's going to be negative right because we're going to the left so let's put a negative there and then to get our component here first of all let's remember just our general formulas for cosine and sine. Cosine of an angle is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and then sine of an angle is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? Because hopefully everybody's heard of the Sakatoa thing, all right? So sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent would be opposite over adjacent. Okay, so keep this in mind right here. Now, my y component is along this horizontal line. Okay, so if I had a regular angle given, I would do cosine, right? To get that y component. Well, I don't have that angle, I have this triangle. So I'm going to use these right hand sides to get uh, my angular information that I need. So for the y component, I want that adjacent side there. So we're going to use adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 24 over 25 because, again, think of this as being theta. That's theta there. You can't tell it. Well, that's theta. So this would be the adjacent. This would be hypotenuse. So this right here is really cosine theta, right? That's my J component. Now let's go to the K component or the Z component. So that's going to be this here. Is that going to be positive or negative? What do y'all think? should be positive, right? So let's put a positive. We know that because it's pointing in the up direction. Now for this one, if I had this angle, I would need this opposite side, right? Because I would need to know basically this component here. So it's opposite the angle. Well, since I don't have that angle theta, I'm going to use this relationship here. So I'm going to do the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite is 7, hypotenuse is 25. So then we get 7 over 25 times k. All right, so now we've got this. We can multiply this through and get our values. So we're going to have negative 72j plus 21k, and that's pounds. All right, so now we have one force vector. Now let's go to the second one. So this one, let's call it F2. Now, again, we have the same thing. I need the magnitude of F2 times the unit vector. 
Actually, we should put a little subscript here. So unit vector two, this was unit vector one. What's our magnitude? 55, right? Because that was given. So let's write that in. 55 pounds. Now I need the unit vector. Now this one I'm given these two angles. Okay. And I'm given these two angles because this force is dropped down by 30 degrees. So it's dropped below that XY plane. All right. So you can see this little square looking shape here. That's the XY plane. We're dropping down 30 degrees. Okay, so I got to have both of these angles to get my components. All right, so this one we're going to have an X component, right? We got that. And the X component would lie right here. All right, so this would be our F2X. Now, what I need to do is figure out how to get there, right? So, what we're going to do, since this is dropped down 30 degrees, I need to bring this up so that I'm on the XY plane. Okay, so to do that, how do we get up to there? We're going to have 55 cosine 35. All right, not cosine 35, cosine 30. Sorry, guys. All right, so we got 55 cosine 30. That's going to take me to right there. Okay, so now I'm at this point. Well, now I need to get over to here. Well, I got this 60 degree angle. So now I want to find this component of this force. Okay, so to do that, what are we going to do? This is adjacent, right? So here we're going to take the 55 cosine 30, which is this red force line that we drew here. We're going to multiply it by cosine 60 degrees to get over to here. All right. So that's what we're going to do next. So I already got the 55 here. So let's just do cosine 30 and then cosine 60. Then that's the I component. And this is positive because we're pointing out in the positive X. Okay. Now I got to do the same thing for J, the J direction or the Y direction. So here, we're going to have this component because that's the component that lies on that y axis. So that'll be our F2y. Now, this one is that going to be positive or negative? It's going to be positive, right? Okay, I'm going to go down here because I'm out of room over here. So we're going to have positive. Now, again, I'm dropped down 30 degrees below that xy plane. So I got to raise it up to the xy plane using the 55 cosine 30. All right, so let's just go ahead and write that cosine 30. And now I need to take it back over to here. Okay, well, if we, you know, use our little triangle, we know we have to use the sign for that, right? Because that would be opposite of this angle here. So we're going to do sine 60. And that's your J component. Okay. So now we've got that, and then the K component. K component is the easy one. So our Z direction, that's going to be right there, okay? Which conveniently is parallel to this right here, right? So that means what we're going to have is the 55, and then we just do sine of 30 because that tells me this vertical component here between that XY plane and my force. Okay, so for the Z component, we're just gonna do negative 55 sine 30. All right, and again, this one doesn't have the two trig functions. It doesn't have a sine and a cosine, for example, because we don't care about the fact that it's dropped down below this plane because I'm not trying to get to one of the axes in this uh, plane right here, if that makes sense. Okay, so now let's go ahead and multiply all that out and see what we get. So we're going to get 23.82i plus 41.25j 
and then minus 27.5k, and that's pounds. All right, so now I have my two forces. I can now find my resultant because I just need to sum this and this up. All right, so let's do that. So we're gonna add F1 and F2. All right. So remember what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up the like components. Okay, so I'm going to have the 23.82i. I didn't have an i component up here, so this is by itself in the, the i component. And then I got negative 72 and 41.25. So we put those in for the j component. And then for the k component, I got positive 21 and a negative 27.5. pounds. So now let's simplify this and we're going to get 23.82i. This j component, once you subtract, is going to be negative and then the value will be 30.75. That's j. And then you're going to get negative 6.5k and that's in pounds. So this is our resultant force, right? And that's in vector form. So I don't want the vector form, right? I want to define the magnitude. Okay, so we're not done with this yet. So now I gotta find the magnitude. So to do that, we just do the square root of the sum of the squares. All right, so let's write that. So we got our square root, and then we're gonna do 23.82 squared plus the negative 30.75, let's square that, plus the negative 6.5 and square that. And with that, we're gonna get 39.4. All right, and that's pounds. So that is the magnitude of our resultant. Okay, so not too bad, right? First thing first though, you have to get those force vectors, which means you gotta get the unit vectors. All right, so now that we have that, we want to find these coordinate direction angles. Those are going to be really easy to find now that we have all this information. Okay. So remember our equations for our coordinate direction angles. They are that cosine alpha is going to be the x component of the resultant over the magnitude of the resultant. Cosine beta is going to be that y component of the resultant over the magnitude, and then finally cosine gamma be RZ over R. All right, so let's do these one at a time and see what we have. All right, so cosine alpha is going to be RX, which is 23.82. Put that over 39.4. All right, these are both pounds, so those units go away. And then we need to find alpha, so we just do the arc cosine of that. And we get 52.8 degrees. All right, now make sure when you do this, you have your calculator in degrees. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people mess that up on an exam. All right, next let's do this one. So we got cosine beta, and now we need our y. So that's negative 30.75. Make sure you carry that negative sign into your calculation. Then divide by 39.4. And now do the arc cosine of this right-hand side to get your angle. So now you get 141 degrees. And finally, gamma. All right, so cosine gamma is going to equal our z component. So negative 6.5, put that over 39.4. And gamma then, once you do the arc cosine of this right-hand side, is going to be a 99.5 degrees. Whoops, that's about to write pounds. We don't need pounds there. All right, there we go. So now we've got our coordinate direction angles, okay? Now remember what these values are. 
So this is the angle between your resultant force vector and the positive x-axis. This is the angle between the positive y-axis and your resultant force. And then this one is the angle between that positive z-axis and your resultant force. All right, so those will give you an idea of the quadrant that your resultant is in. All right, so if we look at this, so if B or beta is 141, that means we're going to be over in here. And then gamma is 99.5, so we're going to drop down below that XY plane. And then we're going to be at an angle of 52.8 degrees from that positive X axis. All right, I would attempt to draw it, but I would make a big mess of that picture. So, but that's basically what those angles tell you. All right, guys, that's it for today. See y'all next time.